Hi guys, welcome back to Need Spire. I hope all of you are doing well and study and working hard for your exams. It is just a matter of few days now and you'll be over it. So this is Dr. Farkhanda Sofi and I'm here to again break down complex topics to you in a simpler manner. So our today's topic will be mechanism of muscle contraction. Many of you had requested me to upload this video. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing or if you already watch my videos, thank you so much. So without further ado, let's get started. So before knowing the mechanism of muscle contraction, I have already explained to you the filaments, the proteins, the structure of the muscle fibers, everything in my previous video. I'll link it down in the description box and you can check it out. So, so brief idea about the actin and myosin. These are the filamentous actins. This is the troponin containing the active sites on the actin and this is the tropomyosin which is covering the troponin. And about the myosin, this is the globular head and this is the tail and this is the short arm and on the globular head there is an actin binding site and there is a myosin ATPase. Now all of this interact in a manner to produce muscle contraction. Okay, before studying about the theory of the muscle contraction that is the sliding filament theory, I want you to know about two definitions. So first definition is the motor unit because it is the motor unit which is responsible for the muscles to contract okay a motor unit is there is a motor neuron which i have talked about in detail in my videos on the nerve conduction and along with the muscle fibers that it supplies okay neuron plus the muscle fibers that it supplies is called a motor unit right another definition is motor end plate so the motor end plate is nothing but the neuromuscular junction or the junction between a motor neuron and the muscle fibers sarcolemma. What is sarcolemma? I told you the membrane, the outer membrane of the muscle fiber. So the junction between a motor neuron and sarcolemma of the muscle fiber. So there should be no confusion whatsoever. A motor unit is a neuron along with the muscle fibers that it supplies, whereas a motor end plate is just the junction between the motor neuron and the membrane of the muscle fiber or the sarcolemma of the muscle fiber. Okay. Now, how this neuromuscular transmission or how the transmission at synapse occurs, I have told you in my video on the neuron. Go check it out. Now we'll study here about the mechanism of muscle contraction, which happens by the sliding filament theory. Okay. The name is sliding filament theory and every year at least one question is being asked from this theory so it is very important don't miss it okay now as i told you when i was talking about the neuron that an action potential travels through the neuron and in the presynaptic membrane then through the synapse into the postsynaptic membrane now here the postsynaptic membrane is the sarcolemma of the muscle so the sarcolemma of the muscle knows that an action potential has arrived now the muscle has to contract once this impulse comes it spreads through the muscle fiber and calcium ions are released into the sarcoplasm. Okay, how? See, for example, this is the muscle fiber. There are these sarcoplasmic reticulum which contain calcium. The moment an action potential arrives, this calcium is released. Okay, and once this calcium is released, inside the muscle fiber are two proteins, that is the actin and the myosin, right? So, I told you in the previous video also, this calcium binds to troponin C. The moment it binds to troponin C, the active sites are unmasked. That is the tropomyosin is being removed from the active sites of the actin and now the active sites of the actin are exposed. Now what happens? See the myosin and the actin are detached right now. Okay. Now once the calcium releases acts on troponin C and unmasks the active sites of actin, now this actin has active sites on it okay now what happens is that here there is a myosin atpase i have told you this myosin atpase acts and causes the hydrolysis of atp that is breaks down the atp now you know every time an atp breaks down into adp and inorganic phosphates there is liberation of energy right as you can see the ATP here splits into ADP and inorganic phosphate and there is liberation of a lot of energy. Okay. So the second step is the hydrolysis of ATP. Now with this hydrolysis of ATP, the energy that is released is utilized to form a cross bridge between the myosin and the actin. And the cross bridge is formed between the actin binding site on the myosin and the active site of actin. So here a cross bridge is formed. Now once this cross bridge is formed, ADP and inorganic phosphate are released out. Okay. So here you can see these are loose ADP and inorganic phosphate. 
Now what happens is this actin slides over the myosin which pulls this cross bridge from 90 degrees to 45 degrees and this is known as the power stroke okay the power stroke happens that is the actin slides here that is why it is known as the sliding filament theory the actin slides over myosin and this cross bridge moves from 90 degrees to 45 degrees and once this power stroke happens again atp comes binds to the myosin head and the actin and myosin get detached okay so this is how muscles contract now you can see if the actin slides over myosin and comes this way the sarcomere will automatically shorten right so now what are the changes that happen in the sarcomere when the muscle is contracting that is again a very important question and you have to know this so i'll write it here number one disappearance of h zone look here the h zone when the actins come sliding over each other here the h zone will disappear right so the first point is clear the h zone disappears next the length of sarcomere in general decreases because the actin are moving here and here so these lines come closer and the length of sarcomere decreases and the i band decreases also what is where was the i band here this was the i band the i band will also the length of the i band will also decrease but what remains unchanged it has been asked many many times is the length of a band length of a band remains unchanged that is also obvious why this is the a band right where the myosin are present and as i told you myosin does not move what slides over myosin is the actin so the actins move i band can change but myosins retain their position so a band remains unchanged okay this is very important has been asked so with this we come to the end of today's video the theory of muscle contraction or the sliding filament theory which is very important go through it and hopefully you will find one or two questions from this topic. So thank you so much for watching this video throughout the end. Thank you so much for your patience. And uh, do not forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. And tell me in the comments what do you want to see more of. What subjects or what topics you would want me to make videos on. And I will definitely try to help you out. So see you in the next video. Till then keep studying. Goodbye.